Are you struggling to come up with original content week in and week out? Start a podcast. Interview your ideal clients. Let them talk about what they care about most and never run out of content ideas again. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome to B2B Growth. I am your host for today's episode, Nikki Ivey with Sweetfish Media. Guys, I've got with me today, Evan Feller, who is Director of Marketing for Smart Recruiters. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. We're going to be talking about some of the stuff that I like to nerd out on. And uh, before we get into that, though, I would love it if you would just give us uh, a little bit of background on yourself and what you and the folks at Smart Recruiters have been up to these days. Yeah, we're, we're having a lot of fun out here. I'm in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we're a tech company and our, our mission is to connect people to jobs at scale. So how we do that primarily is through recruiting software, um, an ATS, and we've got, uh, we're very enterprise focused. So we've got a lot of big customers like LinkedIn, Visa, Bosch, uh, McDonald's. So we're doing well. I'd say, wouldn't you just name drop him? But <laughs> the thing that I mentioned before that we're going to talk about today that it sounds like you uh, we'll be able to speak to just because of the experience you just mentioned is this idea of going from SMB to enterprise, right? On the on the marketing and sales side and, and what that takes, what some of those differences look like, some of the different metrics that change. But one of the first things that, that you mentioned when you and I talked about this offline is the mindset shift when it goes from what you're looking for in an SMB endeavor when it comes to marketing, right? Which is to prompt that one action. So what you're looking for in the enterprise, which is to prompt and measure engagement. Talk about that a little bit for us. Yeah. So uh, just a little bit of background. So right now, very enterprise focused with all the marketing that I do. Uh, but where I came from was the exact opposite. We focused on small, medium businesses. Uh, most of our customers were under a thousand employees, whereas now it's the opposite. And I spent years in both. And fundamentally, before we even get into the metrics, I think I think the biggest difference is... When you are going after small businesses, you you have this like lead number goal, right? Um, it's very much like how do I strategically get somebody on the phone in the second, or get them to take some type of action, right? Uh, download a resource, or you know, fill out a form on our site, and then hound them and call them whenever you're in the SMB space, right? In the enterprise space, it's the opposite. It's it's a little bit more relaxed, and it's not that you need to be slower or doing less. It's it's about taking one person and how do I get them to take six or seven actions over a month? And how do I get their peers and their boss and other influencers on the dis- you know, in that buying decision to take multiple actions over a month? Now, is that different? Is that different in your experience, you know, just because of the sizes of the organization and how many more folks are involved in the decision? Or is it, you know, because of the, the complexity of the products at that at that level? What do you what do you think? Yeah, I actually think it, it had a little bit to do with the size of the company and more people being involved, but also the size of the purchase price, right? Like our, your average sales price is going to be a lot higher, so there's more people involved in the decision. And then also that product's going to affect a lot more people, right? If you own a small business, it's 30 people, you know what? You can make a decision for them. But when there's you know 10,000 people at an organization and that decision is going to affect all those things and everything you already have in your processes... Like there's a lot of people involved and you need, it takes time to convince them to make a change and to change to your product. Right. And so, so that, that SMB SDR, for instance, or SMB sales org or, or marketing team is looking to, in terms of metrics, right? We're, we're speaking the language of leads. And like you and I talked about offline, when we're going into enterprise. We're, we're leaving that behind. Are we leaving that behind entirely? And if so, why? 
Yeah. So we still get inbound leads. Um, you know, we get companies that are about a thousand employees that'll come in inbound and, and we reach out and we'll follow up and then, you know, treat them more like an ABM approach. But as you said, you know, we looked at leads beforehand when it was SMB. And now what we look at are engagements and a lead could be an engagement, right? It's a new company that's engaging with us, but it also allows us at an enterprise level to say, okay, how many engagements did, you know, this new company, let's call it Apple have with us, or let's call it, you know, Best Buy. How many did they have with us? over this month and who engaged with us. And to be able to measure each of those actions, those hand-raising moments, that webinar, that you know, resource download, the demo request, um, and to look at that over time and how many engagements per month, that's what we look at. Got it. Okay. And how is that measured? Is it, the, the, in other words, has the technology caught up to this new shift for marketers? Yeah, I know so, the technology typically is measuring those counting leads yeah. and things like that. What's that look like for you guys? Yeah, it's a good question. So the, the technology is capable, but you definitely have to do a little bit of setup on the back end. So, sure. you know, we're Marketo, Salesforce, uh, main two software there. And Marketo is really set up well for lead, or both Marketo and Salesforce are set up well for leads. And so we had to use some uh, timestamp fields in Salesforce to measure engagement. So now we're measuring everything correctly, but it, it took a little bit of work on the back end. So not only are we counting new leads and you know have create date of new leads, but we have a field called last engagement. And every time you know someone takes an action, I call them hand raising moments. We stamp that that time field for last engagement. So when you this is so interesting to me. So when we talk about sort of that, we got the why right? Why that shift needs to be different why these metrics that we measure need to be different when we're going from SMB into enterprise. How is the content change at that point? And how simple is it to have an approach that's now going to, you know, appeal to, like we talked about, there's more than one person within an organization that's making this decision. What, what kind of challenges does that present? It's the golden question, right? And it's a, it can be a, an answer that entire companies are based around of how do you do content for enterprise marketing, right? Right, right. I think how I would explain it in short is, is a two-part answer. So one is you've got this idea that like, okay, when you're dealing with small companies, it's how do I have a pop-up that makes them quickly convert? Um, you know, How do I put up a 20% off to make them convert now? When you get into enterprise, it's not as much about catching them. It's more about, okay, how do we tell a story? You know, How do we have our top of funnel content that... Um, gets them somewhat interested in our name to know who we are. And then how do you kind of tell a story of, you know, as they get into our product and then we start thinking about, we'll let them hear about other customers and what other parts of our product are there and let them hear about our company a little bit and our corporate social responsibility initiative. And like, it's really like a much slower process, like reading a book, right? And so you, as a marketer, there's a lot more creativity in telling the story but also there's the challenge of how do I connect with, you know, my main email marketer and our website and, you know, our product marketer and, and our sales team and get everybody to be telling that story together. Right. And so it's on the, on the idea of everybody telling that, that story together, I'm always on this show. We talk a lot about uh, how, how marketing and sales work together. And I know that when we're, when we're doing the, the leads and the one action SMB environment, you know, it's, it's, it seems like a simpler sort of relationship, but that's where I've seen it, at least the most sort of friction between the two teams, between your, your sales and your, and your marketing. How is that alignment different or the challenge of, of, of that alignment different when you're talking about an enterprise team versus an SMB team? Yeah. So where I came from, SDRs and marketing were separate. And now where I'm at, our SDRs actually roll up into marketing. And I don't know if, it was some strategy and, and I think a little bit of it was luck and timing, but it's helped our alignment so much, especially you know, as, as we push things over to sales and our, our campaigns are speaking to each other a lot more. Our SDR team works really well with marketing. They have meetings with them you know, weekly, daily. It, they're part of the same group. And my boss, our VP of marketing, you know, oversees both. So I think that's really helped with alignment and is a big part of why we're doing a better job telling our story together. We're not perfect, but we're getting there. Yeah, no, I, yeah, you're speaking preaching of the choir. I've seen that work. I was part of a, an organization. Um, they're now called WellSky, but they were, it was at Kinzer Software at the time, and they sold electronic medical records management software to the, the home health industry. And we weren't even called SDRs. We were MDRs. We were market development reps, to your point, right? So we rolled up into marketing, and it sounds like we were going on like a gangster trip. We rolled up now, but we, yeah. our... 
<laughs> we, our, our responsibility is rolled up into to marketing. And, and so then in that environment, I didn't even know that folks, other organizations were having a problem with marketing and sales uh, alignment because that was all I knew. And, and so when you talk about it the way that you do, like I said, you're pre- preaching to the choir. I know that that works when you have sort of the SDR slash MDR role part of marketing as opposed to being uh, just a sales function that's looking for that, that one yeah. action. So let's just go out and say it, that if you're doing enterprise that Nikki and Evan think that SDR should roll into marketing, let's just, let's stick to it. Let's do it. You know, we just, side should be, we're saying if you're an enterprise, SDR is rolling into marketing. I'm with it. Gabble, we took a stance. Boom. If, if you got questions, call me. No, but. Um, <laughs> we roll up on you. We rolling up, but uh, yeah, I think you did a really got a good job laying this out. Um, I had some some questions coming into this about some of the differences between you know SMB and enterprise marketing. Um, having come from mostly an SMB background, and like I said, the the way that you laid it out as far as the metrics needing to be different, the mindset needing to be different, and the way that the teams work together needing to be different as well. I think there's a lot that folks can can learn from the way that you guys are doing things. So now, Evan, now that I have successfully picked your brain and seen what I could get out of it, it's time for you to let us know what you're putting in it. So tell us about a learning resource that you've engaged with recently that's either informing your approach or that's just got you excited these days. Yeah. So I'll tell everyone the truth. Nikki prepped me with this question and I'm like, I'm not a big book reader, right? I'm not a book person. You're breaking the fourth wall, I Evan. You follow blogs, but like, I'm, I'm not like, oh, I follow one blog. Like I Google things just like everybody else. I'm on 20 different blogs all the time, but mm-hmm. I was thinking about it a little bit more. And, you know, we touched on this before. There is one resource that I consistently talk to and learn the most from when it comes to enterprise marketing, what's going to work for our customers. And that's our SDR team. I'm talking to them all the time. Our SDR team is based out of Spokane. We're in San Francisco. So I travel up there, you know, once a quarter to, to really get some hands-on time with them, to hear some of their calls, for them to tell me what's working, what's not working. And now that I have that relationship, the information flows even faster. And it really makes a difference. And that is my number one learning resource. You know what? I think, I, I think that that's smart. I'm seeing people do this on, on LinkedIn, like a lot of the thought leaders that are talking about things, but they're just not like, they're still not actually giving the credit to the SDRs themselves, right? Like you see these posts that are like, hey, if you're leading a team uh, and your SDRs aren't thinking about X, Y, Z or aren't doing X, Y, Z, then, you know, you're doing it wrong. But what, what I read into that, what I hear is, hey, this person has learned a lot from his SDR team. Yeah, uh, right? They are. We we are. The marketing's there just, you know, making the weapons and SDR's the front line. They're the ones actually using it. So we need to get that. <laughs> oh my, we are gangsters, aren't we? Uh, so <laughs> I know just like me, Evan, a lot of folks uh, listening are going to want to follow along with and keep up with what you and the folks at Smart Recruiters got going on. What is the best way for folks to connect with you? Yeah, so uh, I'll give you one channel. LinkedIn, connect with me. Uh, shoot me a message if you need anything. Uh, Evan Feller, E-V-A-N, last name F-H-L-E-R. Boom. Y'all heard it here. Go out and connect with this man. Uh, Thanks again, Evan, for coming in and laying out those differences for us. We'll have to have you on again sometime in the future. This was so much fun. Cool. Thank you, Nikki. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.